Here I've got my trimmed Wii motherboard. You can find the tutorial for this on my channel. I will put the Capton tape over the regulators for installation. It doesn't really look great, but everything is secured well. On second thought, I've insulated all the regulators separately. It was a bit weird to snag them together and it took a lot of space this way. I've trimmed out the part of the motherboard with AP port, it will be useful later on. Sensor bar and DC jack won't be useful for me. I will use my pliers to carefully remove unnecessary stuff. This is how it looks after further trimming, it can be now implemented into design easily. I've made simple button case for all of the components. I've decided to remove the Capton tape from regulators and make plastic holders for each one of them. Each regulator fits inside the dedicated spot in bottom case. Wii motherboard has its own mounting holes as well. I've used hot glue for now as I don't have heatsink ready yet. I'm using cut-off USB extender as USB drive plug. USB plug is being held by hot glue as well. I've attached the 5V regulator directly to the DC jack. It will supply 5V to the USB drive and heatsink fan. It looks pretty good with my design, at first I thought it will look bulky but it's fine. In my build I'm using generic Kingston USB for games and stuff. After fitting all of the electronics in bottom case, I found that I had to make a new one. The previous one is not gonna work anymore. It's really frustrating to constantly make new revisions, but I can't help it. And now I've made yet another revision, this time it's glue. Each time there's a new revision I have to move all of the electronic components. It's a really tedious job and it gets me depressed easily. Changes may be minor, but I need to make new revisions for perfect final outcome. I've also made the first top cover revision. It has mounting space for the AV jack as well as GameCube controller port. The idea is to assemble both pieces with torque screws coming out of the bottom cover. I've connected all of the electronic parts together to see if it works fine. Everything is functional so far. For the sensor bar I've decided to use the IR LEDs from the real sensor bar. It's just the easiest way and it guarantees that it will work. Inside there are two boards with IR LEDs soldered. I've removed both boards as I will need them in my build. I've also prepared the original cooling fan from my disassembled Wii. I've removed the mounting brackets as those won't be useful anymore. I've also got the original heatsink which will have to be modified with Dremel tool. This is the part where I cut some of the heatsink things so I can fit the fan on top. The main idea is to trim the heatsink so I can hide the fan with it. After cutting it now looks like this. It was a really tedious process but it takes way less space now. This is my newest top cover revision. It now has improvised sensor bar mounting which will make it easier to properly align it with tape. I've also made special mounting hole for the power button. Sensor bar boards by default are connected together with this really long cable which I need to get rid of. Both boards have some loose space on top of the bracket. 
That's why I've placed here some plastic cylinders which can be easily melted and will hold them tight. After melting the plastic it's now more rigid and stable. I've got rid of the original cable so now I have to replace it with new smaller one. I've connected new cable and installed the power button inside the housing. I've cut off the GameCube port from the Wii mainboard, which lets me put it inside the case. GameCube port fits nicely inside the hole, with its spank held down by screw on top. Housing is designed to use the M3 3D inserts. I've put all of the inserts inside the plastic using my spare soldering iron. The AP port is being mounted by two self-tapping screws taken out of the Wii. <coughs> it's designed to fit perfectly inside the 3D printed case. For the detailing I will use Citadel miniature paint as it works really well with 3D print. It will be way better to use some sort of sticker, maybe I will make some in the future. I've made yet another lowercase revision. It's a really dynamic situation over here. I've cut off the one of the heatsink legs since I've got one of the cables going directly underneath it. You can leave it there if you rotate the cables in different way. Screws are installed directly into the lowercase plastic. It will be perfect to use M2.5 inserts but there's not enough space for them. I still need to find a way to attach the fan on top of the keys. Fan is being powered by the 5V, so I've attached to some longer cables. I've decided to solder them directly to the USB voltage regulator, since it's 5V as well. As you can see, the fan works perfectly when given power through the regulator. On video it looks like it's spinning slow, but it's due to the camera refresh rate. Fanner is working well and supplying a lot of cool air. It's now time for yet another plastic revision. Once again it's a tedious process. I've removed the top power button in favor of the simpler one on the back of the unit. I've also made some improvements to the sensor bar mounting bracket. I have some issues with my prints since I've used a really cheap filament. You might have noticed that already. The screw pillars have suffered the most as those are really easy to break when printed incorrectly. This is the power button that I've decided to use. I could have definitely used a smaller one, but I don't have one at home right now. I've also printed the very first revision of the USB cover. USB cover is meant to slide this under lower case and use one screw to secure it. Once again I have to install the threaded inserts. I actually like doing the threaded inserts as it's really easy job. I've sold a couple of the 0.25mm cables to the AV plug. Only 4 cables are required, audio, composite and ground. I've wired the GameCube port pretty much the same way. I've used some thicker wires for the power switch. The GameCube port has to be wired directly to the motherboard right here. I've used hot glue to secure the wires in place. I've used longer cables since these will go underneath the motherboard. AV port was soldered directly to the capacitor on top and two spots on the other side of board. I've decided on using simple rubber band as fan mounting. It's simple yet efficient. I've also soldered two voltage wires to the sensor bar boards. In order to use it in 5 volts, I've had to short out 4 of the LEDs. 
You can completely remove them, but you'd have to solder some wire in their place. After that, I've soldered both powered wires to the 5V regulator. Now it's time to check if it works. I've recorded the whole booting process to show you that it actually works. I didn't want anyone to think that there's a real whip behind my TV. I've synced my Wii to this Wii before, so it connects without issues even after streaming. Loading games takes a while since it works with USB drive. As you can see, it works perfectly fine. I don't have a GameCube controller right now, but I buy it for future videos. I've closed the whole thing using M3 torque screws. It was a bit difficult since there's a lot of spaghetti wiring inside. It's not perfectly sealed since I didn't want to over tighten the screws because those are printed with bad filament. It's still missing the USB cover, but it's coming. I've also redid the paint on top cover since it's the final revision. The USB cover printed quickly, but I have some issues with the USB logo being too large. USB cover is meant to slide easily into the dedicated spot. After sliding it inside, I've secured it with screw and it's pretty much ready to go. I've decided to reuse the transparent plastic from sensor bar. I've got two pieces right now, so it should be pretty easy. I've cut the plastic part so it will fit the plenty space on the Wii. Sadly one of the pieces broke, that's really bad. I put the second piece more or less in the middle so I can fill the rest with PLA. I've got only untrusted PLA left so it will have to do. It's definitely not perfect but it's alright. I think it looks really good under my TV. I could definitely make it smaller though. 